Hello, everyone. Um, so, uh, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me to, inviting me to this particular workshop. It's very, very uh, um, exciting so far for me. Um, so, a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm currently a lecturer in cyber physical system at the University of Southampton. Uh, and uh, I got my uh, bachelor degree uh, in computer engineering and PhD in software engineering uh, from the University of New South Wales in Australia. And um, both of my um, bachelor thesis and the PhD thesis is related to formal methods, uh, in particular uh, related to the classical B method. Um, and before joining the uh, University of Southampton, I work as senior researcher and lecturer at ETH Zurich in Switzerland, and also spent uh, a year in uh, Hitichi, Japan, uh, working um, as visiting uh, researcher on formal method. Uh, so what is actually uh, relevant for this talk is that you know, my research interest is very much on building methods uh, and tools an application of formal method uh, to system development in here. And it basically um, led me to basically to, to spark data uh, in particular. Um, so in this talk here, I first talk about uh, the teaching uh, at University of Southampton in particular on uh, formal modeling method. Uh, basically the position of this you know, uh, formal modeling method uh, in the current curriculum. And I will focus on the uh, second year module, uh, which is uh, advanced software modeling design. Uh, and uh, after that, I will talk about uh, my research, basically uh, on linking system level and software level modeling, and uh, basically uh, to what generation of Spark uh, from the uh, event view, uh, which is a system level modeling method uh, in here. Um, so let's talk about uh, teaching. Um, so I would focus just about the uh, programming and modeling languages uh, at you know, the University of Southampton, in particular in the first two years of a uh, basically computer science and software engineering program here at uh, University of Southampton. Uh, so at Southampton, our student in the first year, uh, semester one of the first year, they will learn basically principle of you know, programming using Java, which is somewhat odd because you know, we actually start out with you know, something quite, uh, let's say, high level. Uh, so they will learn about you know, the concept of you know, doing imperative programming through Java, but also object-oriented, uh, introducing them to object-oriented programming concept as well. At the same time, they learn about computer system, basically computer architectures, and they will self-learn Pythons and uh, programming, uh, and, and also teach uh, the, the thought, you know, assembly, uh, for programming. Uh, and at the same time, they uh, also learn about the foundation of computer science, so set theory, logic, uh, plus some other topic as well. Uh, so all this will support you know, their knowledge in terms of you know, moving on to the uh, later semester. Uh, so in semester two, they will continue with Java uh, in programming two, the second programming module. Uh, but also uh, in, in this particular uh, programming module, they also learn about C as well. Uh, so uh, in this programming too, uh, for Java, they will learn more about the advanced topic in Java, uh, that including uh, graphical user interface and also concurrency using Java as well. Uh, and our students somewhat special in the sense that you know, they were introduced to formal method from semester two in the first year in as part of the software modeling design uh, module which basically combining the first part is on UML and the second part is from formal modeling using the event uh, modeling method. Uh, and then they move on to the second year and in semester one of the second year, uh, basically they learn about functional programming languages, uh, language and the language that we choose to do some is you know, Haskell. Uh, and the relevant module in semester one uh, for the second year is also theory of computing where they are uh, learn about the automata uh, computability and complexity as well. Uh, and in, uh, up until uh, the semester two of the second year, um, they uh, will learn you know, about the programming language concept, uh, again using Haskell, but you know, they learn more uh, in depth about you know, the semantic, in particular, uh, the different kinds of semantic, denotational semantic and operational semantics of program. Uh, and uh, in semester two uh, of the second year, 
uh, they also have option of choosing uh, advanced software modeling design, basically where uh, you know uh, the system modeling using VanB and the software uh, level of application using Spark data has actually come in. Uh, and also they have the option of you know, using computer system too, uh, where they would basically learn more uh, in depth about C uh, programming. Uh, so notice that you know, these, you know, uh, the, the advanced software modeling design uh, and the computer system too is actually optional module uh, for our computer science and software engineering. So in fact, they are actually compulsory for software engineering, the advanced software modeling design, but they are optional for our computer science um, student here. Um, so more in depth about this particular uh, module, the advanced software modeling design, uh, as I mentioned before, it's compulsory for software uh, engineering student and optional for the computer science student. And on average, you know, uh, for every year, we have about 20 odd students. Um, and we used to use, you know, DAFT uh, for the software verification part until the academic year of 2018, 2019. Uh, and one of the reasons that we uh, chose Daphne before is the similarity between Daphne and Java, because you know, Java is the main, you know, the first programming language that you know, our students actually learn. Uh, but then I decided to change it into uh, replace Daphne with Spark data since you know, uh, 2019, 2020. And it basically inspired by the work at Ultran, uh, now Capgemini, uh, and uh, so on and so forth. And you know, in particular, uh, I think that you know, data fit very well with the kind of you know, uh, system level modeling going from system level modeling down to uh, software level. And I wouldn't mention more, talk more about that you know, in the research part. Uh, and uh, as a part of this particular uh, software modeling design, uh, advanced software modeling design module, we invite our uh, industrial guest speaker, uh, uh, often from Ultran uh, and uh, EWE, uh, in the UK uh, to give a talk about you know, how uh, formal methods in particular Spark are actually uh, used in, um, in the industry. And you know, they actually, as I mentioned before, the one of the reasons why we chose Spark ADA is because of this particular industrial usage. Uh, uh, and as I mentioned before, you know, application of formal method is something very, very uh, desirable to me. So that's why you know, we want to teach the student a, um, a method that actually uh, formal method actually uh, relevant for, for industrial application, um, where we feel that you know, Daphne is actually a more academic uh, um, purpose. Uh, so the topic of this particular module in here, uh, is, you know, we start first with your system level modeling using VNP, um, and basically we talk about modeling using statutory and discrete transition system in here. So it continue uh, from the first year module, but also focus more on uh, using proof. So the student will uh, learn how to do uh, proof using sequence canvas by hand, and then using the tool to see how the tool actually help them or basically follow the proof uh, uh, using the tool. And one of the technique in event B for system level modeling is the use of refinement to gradually introduce the detail of the model uh, in a consistent manner into the, uh, in the, into the formal model here. Uh, uh, and after this particular system level modeling, uh, they will learn about software level verification using uh, Spark data. Uh, so the focus on Spark, but you know, we also give them a couple of introductory lectures on uh, ADA as well. Um, and as background of that, you know, they, uh, they learn uh, um, about whole logic and doing proof you know, using whole logic you know, on paper. Uh, and then you know when we come to Spark, you know we, you know they learn about you know, typical um, you know, verification, so the flow, flow analysis, uh, checking program integrity, and uh, checking functional correctness as well. And again, I want to uh, echo the uh, from the other speaker today that you know the learn.ai core uh, website is very very useful for us. So basically, you know this particular material basically we follow the tutorial from the Spark. Uh, uh, for Spark on this learn data core. Um, and as a third part of this particular module, uh, they, the, our student will learn about requirement engineering uh, for specifically for safe and secure system in here. Uh, so one of these um, point about this particular uh, software, you know, this particular module 
is we want them to be able to apply the, the knowledge about you know spark data and as a part of that you know, they are given the coursework uh, and the uh, the example that we are chosen in here is inspired by a uh, industrial elevator system uh, something called multi elevator system in here where basically uh, basically they are an elevation system where they actually have multiple cabin running around in a certain network here. Uh, so the, for the coursework itself, you know, to simplify, we're actually just given to them uh, this particular uh, layout where they basically have two shafts. Uh, one shaft is for the elevator to actually go up, and the other shaft is for the elevator to uh, to go down, for the cabin to go down in here. And sorry, Han, we, we lost your slides. Yep, sorry, I just... <laughs> Accidentally, um, uh, can you see my slide now? Or uh, not now? Okay, mm -hmm. on, let me try to share it again. Uh, I, I, sorry. Yeah. Okay. All right. I share my screen again. Window. Yes, thank you. Yep, sorry. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so in this particular elevator system, um, the each of the cabin here have their own uh, kind of your set of button for you know the user to select you know which uh, floor button you know which floor that they want to the cabin to stop, and outside of the cabin here uh, they actually have button for request the elevator to either to go up or go down on the other side. Um, and basically, the coursework will ask them to model, you know, start with the design of this particular elevator system so that they are safe. Um, you know, for example, there's no collision between the cabin or, you know, the kind of, you know, safety constraint for elevator system uh, that, you know, the cabin should not stop in between floor uh, and something like that. Okay. So they start with the modeling of the system, this elevator system in event B, and then, you know, they design the uh, software part using uh, Spark data in, in here. Uh, uh, and, you know, this particular coursework, you know, started you know, using very, very much, you know, abstract concept, you know, set theoretical contract, like set and function. And we asked them to refine the model to more programming um, uh, contract, um, such as, you know, using arrays uh, and, and, you know, something that, you know, model the record structure. Um, <clears throat> And we give them this particular a skeleton for a simulation of the uh, a very simple you know, simulator in Spark Ada. And they basically translate part of the controller code from the event model to uh, Spark Ada um, as a specification. At the moment, uh, they have to do this manually, uh, but very much systematic. So we show them how to do it you know, systematically. Um, and as a part of this particular translation, they also translate the model invariant as a pre and post condition into uh, Spark Ada. Uh, we require them to prove the correctness of this particular Spark Ada program, um, and basically can simulate they, they can simulate this particular uh, program elevator system uh, basically on a very very simple you know, terminal based uh, simulator uh, simulation in here. So you can, for this particular process here, we want them to start from a system level model which is very very abstract you know they they, they will not kind of you know, having any target of you know any kind of oblivious of the target language you know start with you know something mathematical and then as you go closer to the programming language then they can introduce more uh, programming concept uh, in, into these uh, into their models here yeah. mm -hmm. so the experience that you know, we actually have in here uh, is that you know um, for spark ada will you know, I, I think some of the um, other speaker also mentioned that you know uh, it drives the student to think about runtime. It's a thing that you know normally they kind of take it for granted or actually ignore. You know the kind of things where you know one-off error or the kind of you know, around, uh, you know accessing array outbound thing like that. Um, while they actually have the concept of you know what it is, uh, they usually kind of you know, take it for granted, and they you know really sometimes doesn't care about you know, whether or not they actually have an exception in your in in their Java program. Uh, and 
I think Spark Data is an excellent tool for illustrating hologic. So after doing your know, proof of hologic on papers, something like that, they can see how this actually, this particular logic can actually realize in the tool like Spark Data. And, um, and when they're actually dealing with that, they appreciate the fact that your know, GNA Studio have them with you know a lot with you know during the program class and also in Coursera as well. And having a tool that can actually automatically show them when they actually make a mistake, you know, for example, they forgot to add an invariant for loop invariant so on and so forth, or when they actually you know doing something then um, do not specify correctly the pre and post condition. Uh, it is very very uh, highly appreciated in the Chrome class. Uh, and also, you know, um, this particular um, spark, you know, ADA is actually linked very nicely with system level modeling in event bit as well. So that's a positive point, you know, for you know, this particular module uh, in our you know, in, in our experience using spark ADA in here. Um, for the negative point of that, uh, I think at the moment um, the, the the only one term of the module actually covered on spark ADA. Uh, so we can only cover fundamental concept, you know, you know, spark data and a little bit of, you know, uh, of tool uses in here. And I don't think that, you know, it's actually uh, sufficiently enough for us. Uh, so um, I will mention let, let, later on that, you know, I would like to extend this, you know, to a proper full module on, the, on this. Uh, and by one third of the module here, uh, we're talking about in total of the, the hour of lectures and life and the time that they spend on the coursework is about 50 hours. You know, that they actually dealing with this. Uh, and also, um, we have this um, uneven in terms of the student background, uh, especially with mathematics. You know, um, while we try to use, you know, to teach them all the you know, preparation uh, about you know, the background information about math and, and things like that, uh, often you know, we always end up with, you know, these, you know, there's a set of students that actually uh, very very good and grabs everything um, and there's another set of students that actually really struggle with the material in the past um, and it also you know not only the student background but also the student interest in this particular module as well as mentioned you know that you know this is optional uh, for uh, computer science but you know compulsory for software engineering and we always have some student uh, a set of students actually this you know engaging the material not attending the lectures and things like that so that is something that you know we actually uh, really want to uh, to avoid uh, in here, mm -hmm. um, um, and also you know the, one of the things is that you know the simulation for the coursework you know basically terminal based at the moment is very very uh, poorly done, and you know we would like to to make some improvement on that as well, uh, and you know definitely a better simulation, a better uh, um, way for the student to interact with the model, uh, it, it would be you know. You know would in, improve their uh, interest in this particular model uh, and also engage more with the material in this particular uh, module in here. So that's for the uh, teaching part in here and I will come back with some conclusion later on. Uh, so one of the idea why we actually interested in, you know, uh, teaching Spark is also related to research as well. And I think, you know, it also inspired by as I mentioned before, you know, the work of uh, Ultran of Capgemini uh, right now is about you know, linking between the system level and software level modeling uh, in here. Uh, so what I mean by system uh, is that your know, system, typically what, when we actually want to model it, you know, it involves hardware software communication and other thing as well. You know, so depending on the kind of system, you know, let's say cyber physical system that you, uh, you model, you can also have an other component as well. Sometimes you want to model also the, the human in the loop of this as well. Uh, and by system level modeling here, you know, we will basically, you know, the idea is that you have to reason about the whole system um, you know, at the same time. Uh, and more often or not, you know, this particular activity of system level modeling will help us to discover the relationship between the different system components, either the hardware or the software or the communication, what assumption that we make about the communication between the different components here. Uh, um, and abstraction, you know, using mathematical concept, you know, like I said, your know, relation would help with understanding the property of the system overall. Uh, and as mentioned before, the techniques such as refinement to help introduce 
the detail into the model uh, and you know it should be more uh, concrete data structure for example into the model so, yeah uh, but uh, consistently uh, as well so you can actually prove that your refinement is actually consistent with the abstraction that you specify in terms of you know using set or relation uh, so to ensure that you know whatever uh, data structure that you use for example either uh, array or uh, record will actually consistent with the set and function that you actually declared earlier. Uh, uh, but also, you know, at the same time, you know, we want to make sure that you know, the software um, that we actually produce from this particular system level modeling, so you extract the software part from the system level model, uh, and you want to be able to write an implementation for that particular software that you actually have to be correct as well. So it's critical for the running code. Um, and the software, when we extract the software model from the system level model, um, you know, typically you can also extract the assumption that you know, uh, this particular software made uh, with respect to the rest of the system as well. So for example, the software can expect you know, that the input for this particular channel or the input for this particular processors is only satisfy certain conditions here. Uh, and you know, one of the key things that you know, we see is that you know, we can also uh generate or you know derivable you know divide the pre and post condition uh, from the system level model for the software uh, level model as well so in the next few slides here i would be uh talk a little bit more technical in terms of you know how the linking between the uh spark and the event view model um as well so we consider you know in here on the left hand side you see a uh event b uh, specification uh, and on the uh, on the right hand side, you see a, a Spark uh, procedure specification in here. Right? Um, so this is taken from the uh, multi elevator project. So here, one event that actually specify how the door can actually move from the closed position to half. So they you know, basically you can imagine that the door actually start to to open. Right. Uh, so here, uh, C would represent a cabin. Right. So you can see the the guard in this particular event B model saying that you see is a cabin in here, and you have the cabin door of C actually closed, and you have a, a guard saying that you know, the motor of the cabin has to be off. So this is you know, very, very important because you want that you know, when the door is actually closed, then, sorry, when the door actually open, not closed, the motor of the cabin should be off. You know, this is one of the most important safety properties for any elevator system. Okay, And only under this condition here, that the, the motor is off, uh, then the door of the cabin can move into the half open or half closed position here. Okay. And if we translate that into the uh, a, a specification for the procedure for the door closed uh, to half in here, uh, ignore the fact that you know, we actually have to translate or you know model or using a, a, an array of cabins in here. Uh, basically, in the precondition here, we actually have an invariant of the overall system about the cabin arrays. You know um, about the 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 up button, the array of up button, down button, so on and so forth. Uh, but then you know the guard of this on the event B model here, you can see that it is corresponding you know, quite nicely with the uh, specification in Spark ADA here. Uh, it basically says that you know the cabins, uh, um, the door of the cabin that we're talking about here at end position, had to be closed, and the motor of that part of the cabin had to be off. And as the invariant, uh, at the post condition, you have you know, to assert the invariant, the global invariant of the system again in here. And then we assert that you know, the, after this particular event, sorry, procedure actually being taken, then the door of this particular uh, cabin um, at position N have to be at position half in here. Okay. So that's a kind of you know, what I want to show you here is that you know, there's a kind of a natural way to do this particular translation from a system level model into a specification for a procedure in, in, in Spark. <clears throat> so this is actually taken from a paper uh, by uh, Shanji Van, which is, uh, who was my uh, third year project student. So this is actually part of these uh, basically uh, bachelor thesis, uh, translating or toward generation of Spark from event being here. And when we're talking about the the translation between two different uh, formal languages. We actually talk about, first of all, how the mathematical language actually map between the two uh, languages in here, because you know, for, in B, we actually have more abstract, you know, set theoretical uh, 
mathematical language or in Spark, it's actually more uh, concrete. Um, <clears throat> even though, you know, I know that you know, Spark also having a formal uh, um, data structure as well. Uh, <clears throat> but one of the experience for us is that you know, it doesn't, uh, the prover doesn't work well with that. Maybe we actually have a, uh, that's sort of set the, uh, the, the, the uh, configuration for the prover actually at the right level. Uh, but we um, found that you know it's better for us to generate something that which probably not very you know, efficient, uh, but is something that actually uh, can be proved uh, uh, automatically. So, for example, in here when we actually have the uh, set of integers in Van Beat, so uh, we will translate you know that as an integer in, in, in Spark. So notice that we already have some discrepancy in here that your know, integers in Van B is actually assumed to be infinite. So the true integer, why integer in Spark is basically a subset of the, uh, uh, the, the actual integers you know, uh, in here. Um, so a, as a result, you know, it's very important for us to also you know, to verify that the Spark you know, uh, program is actually working correctly with respect to the new restriction in here as well. Uh, uh, so you know, some other you know, data structure in Van B, for example, we actually have the set of integer. Uh, again, we can translate that you know, integer uh, Boolean array with integers range in here. Uh, and if we have an integer relation, we will actually translate that as a Boolean array two of two dimension uh, with integer range uh, in, in the spark in here. The other logical construct are, are translated you know, accordingly. So for example, negation of a predicate will be translated as not, and conjunction will be translated as n then in spark as well. Uh, so that is actually as expected. Um, so the second part of this particular translation is actually to generating the from the modeling construct. So, um, for example, in event B, we actually have modeling constructs such as a carrier set that can be enumeration or enumerated. Uh, so in Spark, you know, we're lucky that we actually have a enumerated type, um, and in carrier set, you know, which is actually deferred or abstract type in event B, we even you know generated some integer range for that. Uh, and constant uh, again, you know, we generate you know integer constant. Uh, and when we come to variables, uh, we will generate the variable of the appropriate type. So we have look at the type of the variable in the BNP, and we generate the variable of appropriate type in Spark. Uh, invariant is actually generated an expression function, and will be inserted as a pre and post condition for each of the procedures that we generated from here. Um, and the event, which is basically um, and got the event which have got to say that you know, when the event is actually enabled or allowed to be executed, and the action will uh, model the um, how the variable is actually update by executing the event in event B. Uh, so event in event B are translated as procedures where the guards basically naturally come uh, turn into precondition, and action are actually turn into post condition here. So all this particular translation is actually met very nicely. And notice that you know, with here we only translate basically the um, basically the software specification part. You know, in the event B system level model, we uh, often have other event that model, you know, the other action uh, of the user and and things like that as well. Yeah. So that is actually you know, our need to work on you know, basically towards generation of Spark from event B. Uh, and we also continue this work with you know uh, in the uh, a project called HDC um, in here, and you can find the full uh, title of this particular project. Uh, and basically, for this particular project, you know, we interested in uh, security. Uh, so it's actually a call a program called Digital Security by Design or the SBD, uh, funded by the UK Research uh, Council (UKRI), um, and it focuses on capability-enabled hardware uh, proof and software verification. Sorry, you know the objective of this that we target in this project is uh, capability, capability enable hardware proof and software verification. So basically, link the application level security properties and the you know secure software implementation in here. Uh, and this program is focuses on uh, the Cherry architecture or capability hardware and enhanced you know, risk instruction, uh, you know, which is a research you know, from Cambridge. And uh, ARM actually produced a prototype board called Morello with actually system on chip implementation of this cherry architecture. Um, and we actually just got delivered this particular Morello board you know, a couple of months ago uh, for us to, to play with. 
Uh, and basically, you know, uh, Spark Data is one of the target implementation for us in here. Um, you know, um, as one of the things to actually to compare with the uh, the purpose actually to compare the Spark Data uh, implementation with the uh, the C or basically the C implementation on more level in here. Uh, I will not go into detail for this, but the case study we actually consider in here is a secure ballot box uh, provided by Bawa in, in, in the US. Um, and I put a reference for, 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 for our paper uh, that actually talking about this particular uh, case. Yeah. But basically, you know, we would like to produce a implementation of this particular secure ballot box using the uh, Morel board uh, at the, uh, <clears throat> as a prototype, as, as a kind of prototype uh, consideration and compare that performance or the secure, basically in terms of security uh, with you know, different kind of implementation uh, in here. Uh, and as mentioned, the Spark Data is one of the target implementation uh, that we have. So we continue to work on the uh, kind of your know, different process where we start with the implement uh, the specification, the model of the overall system in uh, system level event B, and we extract the implementation or the specification of the implementation uh, from that particular system level model, and you know, target your know, different implementation in uh, in different uh, target language. Um, so that you know, that basically about you know our uh, teaching and, and 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 research you know uh, related to Spark Data at the University of Southampton, uh, and some final remark in here that you know I think you know Spark Data uh, fit very well with our undergraduate program at Southampton in particular. We want to teach you know our students about the science of computer programming, so you know they learn all about you know, the background you know starting from your know, theory and things like that to theory of computing and, and things like that means supplementary them with you know, the, the illustration how you know set theory can be uh, for example set theory and logic can actually use for you know um, the reason about the program uh, or the model of the program uh, at different level in here uh, and as mentioned before that you know uh, we actually in the process of you know uh, reviewing our curriculum and one of the idea uh, that, that personally I want to do is to extend this particular mode, uh, you know, the path for Spark Data to a module on its own. Uh, because, you know, to be frank, you know, a third of module is not enough to actually, uh, for our students to actually to, uh, to appreciate, you know, the power of, you know, Spark Data. Uh, and having some demonstrator, you know, for this. Uh, and in fact, um, you know, we're actually talking about a miniature train control system here. And hopefully later on, I can show you, you know, that actually in my office, is actually a uh, miniature train system uh, as well. And it actually is something that you know, I, I think that would be very helpful for uh, teaching formal method to actually have to set some demonstrator, even you know, it's actually a miniature one. Uh, uh, and in terms of these you know, research, I think uh, the link between system level and software level modeling are really, really fruitful. Um, I, I think that you know, there's a strong relationship between what you can do between uh, system level modeling and software level modeling. And in particular, we are taking the strength of you know, different you know, uh, formal method techniques in here, uh, both in, you know, at the system level and software level model itself. Okay, uh, so uh, that's it. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm happy to answer any question. Yeah, thank you, Son. We, we do have about five more minutes if people want to ask questions. Please go right ahead. Okay, I want to start. Uh, so, Son, you mentioned uh, the use of Spark for uh, for code that uh, is translated from even B, uh, but in the in the B uh, and even B community, there are other tools like Rodan and Atelier Bay with a set mm. of different uh, formal verification tools. Yeah. Um, so, uh, did you use these other tools with your students? And what would you say are the uh, the, the benefits of using uh, one or the other? What what can we learn from other tools being used in uh, in such uh, courses? Yeah. So we actually do use your know, Rodan in you know as for as a tool for 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 event B modeling and. Um, and we actually chose, you know, as I mentioned before, one of the things I want to show the student that, you know, formal method, they can actually use, you know, uh, this from the system level, you know, they can actually derive the, the specification that you can write, for example, in, in, in Spark Data. And Spark Data is actually something that actually used in industry. You know. So we actually have, you know, invite 
uh, guests you know, to, to give a talk about that as well. Um, and as and, and as I mentioned, you know, there's a nature way of you know to see the 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 for example um, at the system level a lot of time. Uh, you actually can derive this relationship between different part of the system, uh, that including you know, the kind of you know, assumption on you know, what is the user behavior that you actually expect, and it naturally come as a kind of you know, pre condition for for your your spark your procedures as well. What is actually uh, you expect in, in there, and I must say that you. Know, I suspect that you know, you know, I asked a student to actually to write the you know the specification for the SPARC procedures. They can do it, but they probably will not be able to appreciate how this particular you know software uh, procedure actually play with the rest of the system. I must say, how can they actually you know um, realize the relationship between that part of the software component with together with the um, uh, with the rest of the system uh, in in terms of the hardware and communication and network and things like that. Yeah, but my question was really on on uh, how do you the uh, the users who are students uh, yeah. manage to to uh, handle the tools and the complexity that the tool in, in oh. produces. You know the the yeah. uh, all, all the things that you have to know to uh, mm -hmm. use uh, uh, such uh, techniques. You have to use tools, and so uh, yeah. So actually, you know, in, in our yeah, thank you. So in fact, you know, in our you know, program, you know, beside the coursework, we actually have the program class. And in the program class, you know, it, the student would have a hands-on experience with using uh, basically is Genat Studio. And I think, you know, as I talked about it before, you know, having a tool is actually very, very important because you know, we actually give them the harder exercise of basically doing proof by hand, you know, using Hologic. But you know, we actually ask them to do basically the first year program class is actually do it by hand, doing very, very small you know, proven program. And then when they actually, you know, and then we give them the, you know, this particular, you know, you know Gina Studio, and they all you know, actually really, really excited to see that you know it is actually something that they can actually do it automatically. You know the kind of, you know, um, and I, of course you know when you actually have a tool, it's much easier, right? You just click a button, and you know everything is actually done for them. Um, but also not only that, you know, I, I think you know being able to actually automate this particular proving process is you know important. But also, you know, I think more importantly that they actually tell them you know, when they actually make a mistake or when they actually forgot you know, to put in the invariant. That is, for me, that is more valuable lesson you know, you know, that they learn with your know, Spark data is actually the ability that you know, a formal method can tell you when you actually went wrong, you know, when you actually did things wrong, or when you actually forgot to actually to put in the right bow, you know, for example, when you actually try to access an array and things like that. And I think that's the value, you know, for this particular, uh, you know, the Spark data too as well. Yeah. So as mentioned, you know, I, I, I just want to quickly show you that, you know, if I can, that I actually have this particular, that is my, you know, train set in here. And I was thinking about your Tulio <laughs> example of the, <laughs> of the scheduling as well. Maybe that is something that I try next, you know, to actually to have the, you know, um, <laughs> having the demonstrator with the uh, scheduling program uh, for the train set in here. Uh, but I think, you know, as application, you know, when we teach formal methods and things like that, you're having an actual um, you know, demonstration and things like that you know, it, it would definitely help with your know, teaching uh, formal methods in, in here. Uh, why I, I think the elevator you know, example is actually very very good you know, in terms of you know, showing that you know, it is actually showing something that um, uh, that is come from a, a real you know, industrial uh, case study, uh, but you know, uh, we do not have the, the real demonstrator that you know, the student can try out. Where with this, I think with this kind of you know, train system here, I can actually uh, allow our students to actually play with the train set, you know, right to some some kind of control system that you know they can actually play with. 